<laughs> I saw this funny, funny, uh, it was making fun of project managers. Uh, it has this guy, and he's like, nine, nine women together can make a baby in one month, right? <laughs> <laughs> obviously, obviously they can't, right? But that's like people imagine how things can happen instantly, right? When it's an organic process, it doesn't matter how how much you try, it still just takes a certain amount of time for things to grow, right? Like trees don't grow overnight, man. It just it takes it takes some time, you know. And it starts out small, <laughs> and then it grows, you know. Yeah, and um, got to start out as seeds and grow something new here, you know. And it could be like we just sort of landed in a hard crack in the pavement and, and we got to break the pavement a little bit with our first little baby root to make some space, you know. Sometimes it feels like that, you know. You know, they want like the right now turnkey solution. You're know, like, dude, I've spent a lot of time to even be privy to some of the things that I'm privy to, you know, whether it's Northern Shaolin, whether it's, you know, driving or shooting or things like that. But people want the like, give it to me right now in five minutes. And I'm like, impossible, you know, and I would be doing you a disservice and I would be disgracing the people that have shown me the things I know to try to even, you know, purport to be able to give this to you in a five minute conversation. Or yeah, I was like, no, we're not renting a car. No, we're not doing this. We're not, I, you know, I, I show people stuff from time to time, you know, and even when I was working at the base, you know, teaching DT, they're always leaning on me like, Hey, what's that one thing you did? I'm like, again, you can't learn it in five days, man. Yeah. Like, you have to ride your bike at night after high school to the JCC. And then you have to do fuhu <laughs> I thought I was going to be like beating people up day one. You're like, no, you're going to be doing pushups. And standing horse, like you're, like this, it's it's not a everyone <laughs> wants the like immediate solution. One, it's awesome to see all of the people that a lot of faces that I recognize. And a couple people I haven't seen for 20 years that I can't even tell the rest of y'all what we were getting into. And it warms my heart uh, to see you guys all here. Um, Brendan was a phenomenal friend to a lot of people. And I've gotten that reflection from everybody that I've spoken to over the last month. I was out in Virginia at his other service at Quantico, which was with full military honors and it was touching to be there. I got to meet his other family and he was equally loved there. And the opinions that people had about him were exactly the same as to who he was because Brendan was fucking Brendan. He was gonna get you in some deep fucking trouble. And then <laughs> if you were in trouble, he was the one you needed to call to get your ass out. And that's just how it was. I was deeply impressed by his friends there. They were the elite of the elite. And there was a number of them that would walk into the room with a calmness like Brendan had at times, especially in his later years, that would just slow down and calm the energy in the room in a powerful way that was palpable. Um, I, I had the opportunity to talk to a few of those people. And there was a conversation that happened on one special night after his service at Quantico, the National Cemetery, uh, between Scott actually and another ex-Special Forces individual that has just rung in my ears. And this fellow said something that I'll tell you guys now. He had already been through it. He was uh, had said earlier in the night with not too much cockiness that he had mastered special forces, he had mastered jujitsu, and now he was on to the next phase of his life, which he said was mastering business, but to me it looked like it was mastering mentorship as well to uh, some younger men in his life. He, he said he walked through life for 20 years asking people what their best moment in life was, and people would say the 
the day that my child was born, the day I got married, and he was searching for his best moment after a life of being in combat and all this, you know, high speed stuff. And he said after all those years, he had come to the conclusion that everybody's best moment is always their last moment because it's the culmination of all the previous moments. But that the most important moment is always now. And that just keeps ringing in my head. Uh, for me, I imagine him in battle as he had obviously been from two seconds of speaking with the man, that you're in some difficult situation, but you need to persevere with all of yourself, which is where we find ourselves every day. And that saying to me said all of that. It's the utmost optimism that whatever that last moment is, is perfect and everything. But right now you have to be present. So that was something that I received and it felt like a gift from Brendan to be in a room as brothers with these people that I had just met. From him vouching from me, just from them hearing all the crazy stories of us doing all the bullshit we did when all of us were kids. So hopefully that rings true or means something to some of you. The other thing I wanted to read was actually words that Brendan wrote that was read at Quantico by one of his good, good friends that operated with him. And it was a list of 10 rules to live by by Brendan. Number one, stay silent. Not everything needs to be said. Two, silence is better than unnecessary drama. Three, the family you create is more important than the family you come from. Four, your current job doesn't care about you. Five, it's better to have one friend than a hundred acquaintances. Six, you'll be 10 times happier if you forgive your family and stop blaming them. Seven, if you always wait for the right moment, you'll waste all your time and miss it. Eight, no one will ever come to save you. Your life is 100% your responsibility. Nine, you don't need 100 self-help books. All you need is action and self-discipline. And number 10, fill it out yourself. So I've shed a lot of tears for Brendan and I laugh every time because he would have just told me, suck it the fuck up, son. <laughs> so everybody, you know, take it light, not too serious, but be serious about your people and who you love. And that's, all, that's all I got. Thank you guys. Well said. I don't know if you remember this thing. Yes, I do. I mean, yeah. Is the brass this, inlay still in there? Yeah. Well, it's not coming out. It's right, it's right up there. Yeah. I made <laughs> the metal properties and fabrication class at UC Davis, man. Yeah, this thing is so heavy, it practically break your wrist or prick train with it. You know, Sifu Jensen needs a, a Bagua cane. And I was oh. like, and I remember when I gave it to you, you were like, um, I don't know that many people that could actually hold this up. You're like, if I needed to crash down a door because there was like a fire, you're like, that would be a really good breaching tool. <laughs> so I don't think you could do like, you know, like, like you're one of the only guys I know that could possibly use this thing because you have the size and the strength, you know? <laughs> the teacher was like, what are you making? He's like, why are you making this heavy thing? I was like, you don't know, dude. Just let me make it. Like, Thanks everyone for being here. It is good to see so many uh, people I haven't seen in a long time. I'm not sure who was even going to come, but I'm glad everybody came. I can't really tell any brand new stories because they're not really appropriate. <laughs> but thank you. Glad everybody's here. And reach out to your fucking people, man, because yeah, that's the other thing. Check all your friends, for sure. Everybody out there was like, Brendan is the best at reaching out at people. People were like, he reaches out to me every day, once a year. But I heard that over and over again. And in a community of people where they were losing people to 
you know, suicides and really struggling. People were like, Brendan, call me a mental health check. Like, that was something he was good at and something I need to work on. So, yeah, good to see y'all. Someone say something funny. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna prank call me, man? Who's gonna prank call me? Those are the stories that we can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> it scared me so bad. <laughs> can't even tell you. So mad this week. Yeah. Did he call you from the fake numbers? Called me from the fake numbers. Voice changer? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, it was fucked up because every telemarketer got like three or four minutes because it might be Brendan. Bro, this man called me from my parents' number in LA and had the voice changer on like a screaming woman panicking and I don't know what he was saying and it was all distorted freaking out. <laughs> you know, you know uh, when we were back in Eastern Virginia, uh, his girlfriend found this mask. It was like a Japanese anime mask but it was electronic, so you could switch between the different faces on it. And some of them were like just electronic, or like there was a smiley face one, and there was one that was like a geisha girl. And so apparently Brendan, in the middle of the night, he would drive around with his mask on in his truck, <laughs> right? And then up next, people look at him, you know? And people just freak out, apparently, um, because it was, very, it was very strange. And he'd wear like a hoodie, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just to watch the expression, I'm sure, you know. <laughs> that sounds like Brendan, right? That, like 100%. Oh, that one was too soon. Yeah, well the, the, other, the other one was uh, he, had, he had successfully hacked all of his neighbor's Wi-Fi's. Uh, we, we found his Wi-Fi security test equipment. And uh, so if you, if you felt the urge, you know, you could have changed the uh, channels on everybody's TVs or turned their appliances on and off. But, you know, whatever they had hooked up to their Wi-Fi, uh, Brendan was their uncle, I guess. Uh, I, I think that for him was, there was a little, a little mischievousness in there, obviously, but I think that was also him just making sure that his neighbors weren't like communist spies, you know? uh, just a little preemptive security there. That's, that was pretty cute. He always wanted to be a G.I. Joe ninja. <laughs> oh, well, and, and, and he did. And he you did. guys sort of realize, like, like what, 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 what Jesse was saying in that audience, in, in, uh, he was buried at the uh, Marine National Cemetery at Quantico. So that's like the ar 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 Army veterans are filled, buried at the uh, Arlington National Cemetery, and that's it's like you see a spy movie or a political movie and there's, you know, American servicemen being buried. You know, it's probably one of those two places, and, but it's their Marine, it's, it's Quantico. And so his uh, service classification, he was a special amphibious reconnaissance corpsman. And corpsman is a Navy term for medic. So uh, the Navy, they don't say medic, they say corpsman. And that's a really rare classification. And where it's like you're a Navy SEAL, but you're also a, a high-level medic. And uh, the people that were his friends, they were, uh, and who were in that audience in that room, uh, they were Marine Raiders. And, and Raiders, if you don't know, those those are like the Marine Green Berets or the Marine Special Forces. There's Marine Recon, which is elite, but then the Raiders are the next level. They're the most elite Marines that there are. And uh, when when they go out. You know, the Marine history was the Marines launched from Navy ships, so when they would go out, they would take a Special Forces trained medic with them, and then that would be their medic on their team. But, uh, so the, the group, the, his friends were the Marine medics, and there were active duty Green Berets in that audience, and there were Navy SEALs, and there were two members from Navy Sea, SEAL Team 6, that's the most elite, that's like, there's only a dozen or two dozen of those guys, right? I mean. So, and CIA people and State Department people, I mean, you know, so like, did Brendan reach a pinnacle of the career that he wanted to, to reach? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, he was, he was there, you know? And uh, all of those people had the utmost respect for him. I mean, you know, and, and many of them really, really, really loved him. And I mean, when, we, when they were doing the flag ceremony and uh, the 21 gun salute, Man, I've never seen so many huge, strong guys crying in my life. 
it was uh, very, very moving. I mean, Justin was there, and that's, that's really how it was. But uh, he was very, very honored for his career. So, you know, if you think about, you know, like, did Brendan sort of achieve what he wanted to do in his life? I think he would say yes. You know, and uh, I would have loved to see Brendan, what would Brendan do with another 40 years? You know, like, if he'd moved beyond that career to another whole career, what would it have been? It would have been really interesting, you know? I, I always thought Brendan would have been really suited to be like a Coast Guard rescue diver. I thought that would have been a good a transition career for him. Um, but uh, transition career doesn't really make sense when you say Brendan Smith's name. I don't know, it just didn't sound like it. It's I thought comedian. 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 Yeah. I was trying to tell him, go humor. stand up. Go do yeah. some stand up. And he would have liked that, but yeah. I don't know. We just came up. I don't know how many people have spoken before right now. No, no, no. Go for everybody. it. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> A lot of pressure right now because now I, I got to do it without hearing what everyone else said. But I was uh, the second person, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> uh, Brendan was my bro. He's my first. He's my first brother from another mother, and I have multiple now. But like, he was a guy who brought all of us together today. I don't know if my day of death is gonna bring anything like this. And I don't know. I wasn't ready, <laughs> so I'm gonna start cracking up. Anyone else who wants to go <laughs> can go. But like, yeah, Brent Brendan was a special guy who touched a lot of people's hearts in a way that was very disarming, in a way that like, there was no one that he couldn't talk to in any way, shape, or form. Like, I don't know. He always had love and respect and care for anyone that ever was a part of his life, whether he liked them or not. Like, it didn't even matter. I don't know. Like, that dude, I, I didn't mean to jump in and speak. <laughs> I just thought like comedian, because yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, Brendan had Thank kindness you. for strangers. He had generosity for strangers, actually, which is a rare quality. He actually did exhibit that on multiple occasions, you know? Yeah, I don't know the people that grew up as youngsters. I, I think she left. Uh, Lauren was here, and I didn't remember her from Willard, and she was talking about Willard and how grimy it was she was like I can't even talk about it with anyone anymore and I, the first thing in my head I was like yeah we were like 12 13 it was like going to school in a penitentiary thought you're gonna get shanked in the hallway and uh it was wild as a kid and I know Brendan you know I went to private school with Brendan before we went to Willard and it was trial by fire and he was you know used to running around with all the rich kids and everything was fine. And then it got grimy real quick. And uh, you know, we're all grown now. That was scary times as a child in some sense. And I know as his best bro, there was vulnerability in that that he wrestled with. And I saw that fuel him to, you know, be able to deal with any problem at any time. And he was that guy. You had, I mean, shit, that was my escape plan. My whole life, my 40 years old, my escape plan was, he even said it, come to my house, you'll be good, <laughs> right? And I believe that with all of my heart. And, uh, but talking, and I always knew this about Brendan, because I always knew, and I know a bunch of you feel this way, he had your back no matter what. And, he was probably meaner and tougher and stronger than you and he might have been smarter than you because he was one of the smartest motherfuckers I knew and out in Virginia how many people did I talk to that told me a story of how he they had a disabled child somebody who was struggling like it was so clear that he had this soft spot for anybody that felt in danger or in fear and so that was, you know, I mean, I know what I saw it on your Facebook, Davi, somebody, one or two people piped up on there and they were like, oh, I remember I was having a tr some trouble in high school and there was Brendan standing up for me. And I heard that story over and over and over to the end. And I just, I thought it was beautiful. And I was talking to the people that he knew as a, you know, adult. And they, like, to me, it made so much sense because I know Brendan felt that way. And as a 
youngster and he didn't want anyone to feel that way and he would interject himself and so it was funny when he was in the the club of all the tough guys everyone saw him be like that but they didn't know why so it was just you know i don't know another little brendan brendan special thing yeah usually when they had a cup out yeah, I wanted to tell that story so bad. I wanted to tell that so bad. Hey, he only said that once to one person. <laughs> no, no, no. And he felt so terribly about saying it, he never really said it to another homeless dude again. No, we were Because he felt bad. I saw it first. So we were super youngsters, and, and it wasn't like a really down and out homie. It was like the, the, the gutter punks that are that are jerks. Man. And uh, one of them was like, hey, what's up, man? You got any spare change? And he was like, change comes from within. And I just lost. <laughs> It's like, oh my god, he did that. <laughs> that was so great. All these memories are bubbling up right now. I had some problems in elementary school, and I, I remember him being like, stay in my house for a second, it'd be good. And uh, gosh, all these things are surfacing. It's funny, because it was it felt blank before now, but I can't, I can't begin to count how many things are surfacing right here and now. But I'm not sure which I can share for you or not. <laughs> Pass. Go. The woman that Brendan was seeing for the last few years, and I told a few of you selectly, but she, she told me to tell his friends that in all those, in all the time she knew him, but especially the last six months to a year, that he was just always telling stories about his friends and talking about his friends. He said, every one of his friends that was his good friends was his best friend and he just she just wanted everyone to know like how important his friends from here were to him you know all along the way and how much he loved his friends and you know y'all already know that but that was a message from the other coach you feel so somber you feel like we need to be celebrating more i don't know like Brandon wouldn't have wanted us to all be here hella sad. Yeah, no. yeah, no. yeah. All right, who's the new class clown? <laughs> <laughs> got some PG stories. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you broke into my house one time. You know, I was on my computer at like midnight and I just and I had a really big dog at the time and just started barking and I looked and I lived on the second floor of the duplex. Brendan just tumbled in my window onto the floor. Hey, back when you used to stay like near 40 in. Yep, and, like, yep, and, yep. I remember that. Tumbled into my window. I was like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I was like, it's when he was getting ready to go to the military. So I was just practicing my ninja skills. Like, <laughs> I wanted to see if I could break into my homies' houses and take something and notice and then like give it back. <laughs> dog went crazy. Hey, that's real, because Brendan used to call and we'd talk about the same shit over and over again and you know it's all just silly shit but he was proud of our hijinks yeah. being kids we used to be up on my mom's balcony she's not here anymore <laughs> she she wanted us to eat healthy so she'd always have a fridge full of fruits and vegetables and it was berkshire hedge there was one house right below berkeley Eye. there was one house between us and then the school with all the little kids we were probably like sixth seventh eighth grade and they were like first through sixth grade we'd be out on the balcony like this with all mom's fruits and veggies just waiting <laughs> they'd come out for recess and we'd be winging fruits and these little kids would be raining carrots and shit they'd be, oh, oh. We'd just be laughing about it 40 years later we were laughing about it <laughs> Of PG Brennan stories, but I was gonna say, like, uh, <laughs> I'm only gonna do a PG one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, a, not a very PG guy. <laughs> Whoever's the last man standing can tell all the stories. <laughs> you do a compilation of Brennan's stories. Yeah. He visited me a few times in LA when I lived out there a few years back. But when he was in San Clemente, he wasn't PG. <laughs> up in here played Street Fighter 2 with Brandon. Who won? Probably always won. <laughs> you won? I used to beat his ass. Uh, I was just saying, man. <laughs> sure. The last time I well, played... I'm a video game guy. Like, I, I had Street Fighter Turbo 
Oh, All right, the, the SNES. Okay, yeah, there I we kick, go. I used to kick his ass. Yeah, I remember playing Tekken and shit at your house with Brendan. I lost the last time we played in the arcade. I always thought I'd get my redemption, but it'll have to wait. I never admitted that to him, though. I told him, I was like, fuck you, dog, I'll beat your ass. <laughs> We've been drinking, so. When that game, the Street Fighter Turbo first came out on the SNS, mm -hmm. I had the regular Street Fighter. So we went up to Blockbuster, we rented that shit. Came back, we were playing it, your three days is up. It's time to bring the game back. We were hella sad, we were like, Man, we can't be stuck with those old eight characters. We need the turbo. So we started thinking. Got the radio. Brandon was proud of this. Like three weeks, what, five weeks ago, Brandon was proud of this. We got the radio antenna, broke it off, started bending it up, unscrewed the little secret screws, put the old chip. <laughs> he was for sure swapping uh, so, some sad kid the next week rented Street Fighter Turbo and was like, oh, this is a ripoff, man. This shit is just like the old one. And we were still sitting there. I don't know if it's true, but if anyone in here, because I haven't seen this fool since junior year, still talks to Dashiell DeMarco, I almost think that motherfucker ended up with a Street Fighter 2 cartridge with the turbo chip in it. So if anyone here talks to that man, ask him and let me know. Yeah, ask him. Okay, ask him. might be in contact, huh? <laughs> yeah, call that man now. Hey, hey, you remember that Street Fighter 2? I want my game back. <laughs>